Here we'll learn about gastrulation, which teaches about the formation of the germ layers, ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. Start at table to note that gastrulation is the process wherein the embryonic disc develops from bilaminar, two layers, to trilaminar, three layers. Importantly, this process is not just the addition of a cell line, but rather the evolution of a single cell line into three wholly new cell lines. Denote that at the outset of the process, the bilaminar disc comprises epiblast and hypoblast. Show that the trilaminar disc comprises ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm, all of which derive from the epiblast, none from the hypoblast. To begin, draw the blastocyst as a circular cyst. Its name appropriately means a cell-producing cavity. Give the cyst some three-dimensionality. Next, divide the blastocyst into a trophoblast, the outer cell mass, and the embryoblast, the inner cell mass. Then label the blastocyst cavity. Next, let's establish where the blastocyst exits within the uterus to understand its implantation. Draw a coronal section through the uterus. Centrally within the uterus, draw the uterine cavity. External to it, show that the uterine wall comprises three layers. From inside to outside, they are the endometrium. Myometrium shows some of its muscle fibers and the parametrium. Then draw a magnified section of where the cavity meets the endometrial portion of the uterine wall. Show that at this stage, the blastocyst resides within the cavity. Now we'll show the evolution of the trophoblast. Show that it divides into the cytotrophoblast, the inner cell line, which maintains a similar shape as the trophoblast, the syncytiotrophoblast, the external cell line, which invades the uterine wall to lay the foundation of the placenta. Within the cytotrophoblast, show that the embryoblast transforms into the epiblast, which are columnar cells, that's the original mass of inner cells, and the hypoblast, which are small cuboidal cells. It's a new layer of cells underneath the epiblast. Indicate the bilaminar germ disc where the epiblast and hypoblast meet. Next, redraw the magnified view of the uterine wall. Where the wall meets the cavity, show that the syncytiotrophoblast has invaded the uterine wall. Then redraw the cytotrophoblast, epiblast, and hypoblast. For the next stage, show that the epiblast generates cells that become the ectoderm, a transition from what was previously the epiblast, and the endoderm, a transition from what was previously the hypoblast. Note that although it's classically taught that the endoderm completely replaces the hypoblast, some of the original hypoblast is indeed integrated into this new endodermal cell line. Specify that the amniotic cavity is a space that the ectodermal cell line fills, and the yolk sac is the space that the endodermal cell line fills. We see that space exists between the ectoderm and endoderm. Show that mesoderm fills this space. Specifically, it's intraembryonic as opposed to extraembryonic mesoderm, as we'll come to better understand later. So now let's learn the process of gastrulation itself. Show that the epiblast forms the primitive streak, a dimpling at the germ disc posteriorly. And show that via gastrulation, epiblast cells spill through the primitive streak to form their new cell lines. Indicate that the Epiblastic cell passage through the primitive streak is regimented in a posterior to anterior orientation as the primitive streak grows anteriorly. Write that mesodermal cells pass through the posterior aspect of the primitive streak early in gastrulation, and the endodermal cells pass through the anterior primitive streak late in gastrulation. Further specify that it's the most lateral, the outermost mesoderm, that passes through the primitive streak first. It's the extraembryonic mesoderm, which is then followed by the lateral plate, cardiac, and axial mesoderm, the somites. Ultimately, they're followed by the midline mesoderm, for instance, the notochord. 
You can infer the specific cell lines if you remember lateral first and midline last, ultimately followed by the endoderm. Indicate that the germ disc is now trilaminar. Next, let's show this stage within the uterus and further distinguish what we mean by intra versus extra embryonic mesoderm. Again, draw a magnified view of the uterine wall. Draw the syncytiotrophoblast completely within the wall. Add the cytotrophoblast internal to it. Then show that in addition to the mesoderm we previously drew, there also exists an additional mesoderm layer, the extra embryonic mesoderm just internal to the cytotrophoblast. Again, draw the ectoderm and amniotic cavity, and endoderm and yolk sac. Label the mesoderm between these germ layers as intraembryonic mesoderm, as opposed to that which surrounds it as extraembryonic. Cavities appear in the extraembryonic mesoderm that pool together, they coalesce, to form the chorionic cavity, also referred to as the extraembryonic coelom. Finally, let's list out key germ layer derivatives. Note that this list is not comprehensive. Ectoderm derives skin and its derivatives, hair and nails, etc. Adrenal medulla, nervous system tissue, and sense organs. Mesoderm derives musculoskeletal tissues, adrenal cortex, testes and ovaries, kidneys and ureters, and other organs. And endoderm provides the epithelial lining of the gastrointestinal respiratory, urinary, and reproductive systems. This concludes our diagram.